record. So uh, thanks, Juan, for uh, being one of the first to walk through the uh, handbook on cross-functional prioritization from an engineering manager's engineering development manager's perspective and um, giving feedback on it because we want to improve it overall. So I know you, uh, rather than us going through it live, um, you've done that in advance, which is great. So why don't we talk through your uh, suggestions and feedback? Yep, we can, we can certainly do that. Um, for this, do you, do you want us to just work through the document independently or you want to share sure. a screen? Whatever works best for you. Okay. All right. Yeah. So I, I definitely went through the the whole section on you know cross functional prioritization, mm -hmm. and I basically have two sections here uh, of feedback. One is just immediate suggestions of possible improvements. Uh, I did try to look at it through the lens from uh, an engineering manager, uh, but some of the suggestions are just general clarity of of, of the write up. Um, and then I have some questions, you know, that maybe are food for thought, you know, in terms of, of uh, how we may be able to address them. So maybe we start with the five suggestions that I have. Um, so I was thinking that, you know, again, from an EM perspective, it might be worth, I, I feel like the section goes immediately into the weeds of what to do. And uh, I was thinking that maybe it could benefit from having a a little bit of an introduction about the importance of why we're doing uh, this cross-functional prioritization and what is it for, you know, to gain uh, for engineering managers to participate in the process or or kind of from maybe even from each one of the roles, right? Like what what it is that they they could they could win by that, um, you know, as an engineering manager, just highlighting, you know, the fact that it, it's a good way to ensure that the needs you know from engineers are being heard by the product manager and moving the agenda from from the technology side of things right I, I feel like that would be a good way to point that out this is great feedback we focused a lot on the benefits to the top levels as you said but we haven't fo focused on as much on what the benefits are to the teams so i think we should do that it's great feedback yeah. Um, but I'm okay. going to take all, after a meeting. I'm going to take all the suggestions and uh, create issues. We're tracking work for the for the working group and issues, uh, so I'll create some issues uh, for the team to work to update okay. the process. So, but I'll do that. I won't do that now. I'll do that afterwards. Yeah, yeah, no worries. That, that's awesome. Um, similarly, you know, in in the main section of of the cross functional prioritization, we refer to to this other section of the handbook where we have a more detailed breakdown of the work types, you know, uh, and the labels that are related to those work types. Um, the one thing that is not clear on the main section, but you can actually find it in the, in the follow-up link, is that it is the responsibility of the engineering manager to actually make sure that those labels are assigned correctly to the issues. Um, so again, I thought that that is something useful. I, I found it very, you know, useful to understand that, right, as an engineering manager. And maybe for others, it would be good if it's on the on the main section as opposed to kind of just in this other link. Um, just a little thing there. Agreed. Um, then the next one, uh, yeah. So I I found that you know we emphasize that the prioritization will be done by the quad planning, but then this this there is this other table further down where we list you know who's the the DRI for each one of the types. And it's not clear what the UX is supposed to do, right? The UX uh, counterpart is supposed to do. It, it, it's a great point. The UX team pointed this out as well. Like we say, they're part of the process, but we don't say exactly what they should do. Um, so I'm actually doing a, uh, I'm doing a review like this. We're doing a, four reviews, one with an engineering manager, development manager, so like yourself, one with a UX leader, one with a quality leader, and also a product manager. So um, actually, I think I'm doing that later today or tomorrow. So I'll get more feedback from them, but that, that's a good call out. Absolutely. Okay. Cool. Um, and then as I was going further down in that section, I found this, this whole big, pretty big section on engineering allocations. And I know that we have this heading that says the, the engineering allocations are being replaced by the uh, cross-functional prioritization. But I found it very distracting, like, and because it has different hierarchy of headings, mm -hmm. you don't know where where it stops, you know, and where you go back to kind of the the final two sections of the cross functional prioritization, which is the 
the sessions and and um, some other section at the bottom. So maybe maybe just removing that and putting it in another page might help with the the flow of these new. So you know, move process. it to another page and link before we remove it later. I think yeah, exactly. That, that's what I was thinking. I don't know how we're gonna remove it, but yeah. Yep. Move it before we actually removed it too early. We thought we were ready to remove it, and then we had to put it back because we 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 okay. a little bit early. But it's still a good point. Is we do that, um, we can clean. We can make deprioritize it by put, moving it to a different page. And like, yeah, and I, and I was looking at the source code, and it seems to be another file. So it really would be pretty straightforward to just put it in another page because it's already in in a different file. Um, yep. Yeah, and then the last one here. Um, yeah, this, this might be a minor thing, but I, as I look at the issue, uh, I guess it's a combination of a question and a suggestion. I'm assuming that the issue that you created for the onboarding is just one, right? One, you're only going to do this one time. Yes. Um, so, so maybe it's worth just calling out that it is also expected that we will build this cadence you know, on our own, either through an issue or through some calendar invite where we provide the, the specific lists as DRIs from uh, an engineering manager and a quality manager perspective. Yeah, it's good. it'll be a single, that, that adoption issue is intended to be single. Um, we did do a poll. What we didn't do is prescribe how a development manager communicates their priorities, how quality does either for bugs, uh, development for maintenance, quality for bugs. Um, but we did do a poll um, amongst development managers, quality managers, and UX leaders about how they want to communicate their priorities. And um, the top, we want to find out what people are doing and want to do. The top answer is an issue per release. The mm -hmm. second most popular answer is an issue that spans across releases. Or maybe mm -hmm. that's the third. And the second, was, uh, the other one was um, in an issue board. So what we want to do is make it more uh, standardized. We haven't figured that out yet, but we started polling to see what people want to do. What, what would you prefer? Uh, an issue per release, an issue that spans multiple releases, or an issue board, or something else? I'm just curious. I don't know if you did that survey or not, but I'm curious about your thoughts. No, I didn't complete the survey, but I, I think uh, I will probably try to keep it consistent because I already set up an issue per release for uh, for the reviewing of the dashboards, you know? Uh, for that part, you know, and uh, I think it could be part of of that project that I create, but that I set up that I could create issues there for making sure that people are providing their lists. Although, you know, that one is kind of owned by the product manager, you know, uh, mm -hmm. and whereas the review of the dashboards is owned by the engineering manager. Great. So let's talk about the questions you have as well. Yeah. So <clears throat> regarding the the dashboards you know versus the uh the issue boards right so we have the dashboards that basically look backwards right at, at the breakdown of the different types of mrs that we've had you know whether they are features bugs or um maintenance and i was trying to understand okay as we go into planning we're looking at the issues and their tags but when we look at the report we're looking at the mrs and their tags so if that is true, maybe it's worth calling out, you know, for for engineering managers that they should be looking after the tags on the MRs as well, because if you do it all right in the issue, it doesn't necessarily mean that it will be all right and and map in the same way on the MRs. So I feel like there's a little bit of disconnect there that is not quite clear at first glance coming in. Uh, at least no, it wasn't for me. Yeah, yeah, questions come up often. I think we, we should make it clear. The current dashboards are for MRs. Um, and it's about what is happening. Right. It doesn't tell us a prediction of what will happen in the future. So we're actually working on other dashboards, uh, specifically for the CTO and VP of uh, product management for planning purposes. So they can see what's planned per release. But you know, issues in MRs are not the same thing, of course. You know, um, but that, that's what we're working on. But yeah, they're currently based on uh, merge requests. Yeah, and I think I don't think when you create the MR inherits the the labels, right? I don't think the MR inherits the labels from the issue uh, from which it was created. Uh, so I think it's just a a governance thing, right? To make sure that the MRs end up with the same labels as the issues that were originally planned. Am I making sense? Yes. Yeah. 
Okay. So on your number two, actually, it'd be great for you to share your screen if you have, uh, or, or, or the link to, to where this text um, appears. Oh, yeah, for sure. So let me... Um... You see my screen? Yes. Okay, so I have my notes here. So this text here. Um, so it's in this section where we're planning for the milestone. Mm -hmm. There is this recommendation here, but I, but I wasn't sure how to interpret this. And, and this link here is just a link to this same page and this same section. So it's like a like a circular link that just leads to the same area. same thing. Okay, cool. Yeah, uh, you know, as I read that, I'm sure it had the best intentions to be clear, but it didn't didn't succeed. Uh, so we can make that clear. If, if you could just copy and paste that, well, I can I can just search for the exact text. So okay, cool. Nope, makes sense. Um, this actually goes back to as well that we need to standardize how the priority should be communicated. Uh, to the product manager, um, which I think will help. Cool. And then uh, third one. Yeah, so this third one was about, just curious, you know, like the, I feel like there is multiple ways to look at the balance, you know, of work across those different types of, uh, of work. And mm -hmm. one is the count of issues, but another one could be the weights on, on those issues. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if, if we have widespread adoption of the weights. Um, but I feel like if somebody is, is doing weights, <clears throat> that could actually be more accurate, right? Than just counting counting issues. Yeah. And that has actually come up before. Um, uh, in, in actually probably twice in the AMAs is uh, ask me anything sessions on this as to should we, if we're counting MRs or issues and if we're counting issues, should we can weight of issues, not the uh, just number of issues. And our dashboards previously were all MR based, but we are working on the new executive dashboard that's issue based. And it's something that Lily Mai is working on. So I'll add that as feedback to the executive dashboard that is issue based. Right, right. Yeah, that's true. Uh, I think um, we're looking at the MRs, there is no waste on that. So yeah. But we do have another one that's based on issues per milestone, <clears throat> MR okay. counts per month. And I, I think the weights might be useful. Um, do all teams, do you know if all team, I, I'm getting, you know, your team, sounds like your team does weights on issues. Do all teams do that generally, or do some not do that to your knowledge? Um, I don't have full visibility, to be honest, to, to be able to ascertain whether the, the vast majority use them. Uh, on the enablement side, I think uh, most of the, the other engineering managers that I've talked to uh, use them. Um, there might be even some discrepancies into how they estimate, you know, as long as it works for the team, they they may have a slight different approach to, to use the numbers. Um, but I think that, yeah, most, most, most of the enablement teams do. Great. Yeah, it's, it's great feedback. Uh, and now we have a good place to potentially incorporate that, the, the dashboard that's issue-based versus MR-based. So tell me more about number four. Yeah, so that one is this list. Uh, that is found <coughs> back. So this is this prioritization framework at the bottom here. <clears throat> so this seems to be part of the same section, right? If we, if we look at the, uh, at the outline here, prioritization mm -hmm. framework and prioritization sessions is part of this cross-functional prioritization. Mm -hmm. um, so the table is just drop here. And, uh, but then after this table, then we go into this engineering allocation stuff. And it's not clear how this plays into the new cross-functional prioritization. Maybe it's my lack of, of um, context, um, you know, being a new engineering manager at GitLab. Um, but I was wondering like how, and if this table applies to this new process. It's a good point. It, we can make that clear. It does. It continues to. And 
I mean, if, if I look at this here, performance, fixing regressions. <clears throat> the because thing. these things are referenced on the, um, on the engineering allocation section, there are references to this table. Yeah. So it made me wonder if it was a remnant from, from the allocation. I think it's partially a remnant, but th this still does, this can be improved. It still does apply. It's inside each group. So like when we talk about prioritizing bugs, security fixes are higher than other types of fixes. As I read this, mm. um, data so loss. that you're looking at this right column and then yeah, it's the relative it, importance of, of the one. It's the relative problem. importance um, of them. And like you see ARR drivers down at number eight. That's basically features. That's the issue label of feature. Um, okay. We didn't say that here. Um, and yeah, it's the relative performance. Or sorry, relative priority of them. But we didn't make that. We can make that clearer. Yeah, maybe maybe just just some examples of how, because I was just guessing right in my mind how this would be used, and and what came to mind is like okay maybe this is used when there is a conflict of interest between you know the PM and the the UX person or the engineering manager, and this is a way to kind of resolve that conflict by just having clarity of of you know how things. Uh, yeah, should be prioritized when when you have a mixed bag of of things that serve different purposes right yeah absolutely okay this is why it's okay. great to have somebody who didn't work on these changes review them because now it jumps out at me like a sore i'm like of course we should have fixed this but you know when you do uh i think we probably had 20 mrs uh, separate merge requests on the handbook changes for this okay. it's hard to see the the bigger picture when you're working on all the details so uh really appreciate all your feedback Juan. this is great i think this will improve it for all of your peers and for future uh, people at GitLab, future engineering managers who are going to read the handbook to figure out what they need to be doing uh, and uh, documenting it well will make that much easier for new people too. Cool. Yeah, no, happy, happy to do that. It was very, very helpful for myself as well. Cool. Thanks, Juan. Have a great day. Thanks, Wayne. Bye. Cheers.